Hello and welcome back to the farm. Much like in the last video, here we are in the early part of January. The new year has just hit and there's still not a lot of snow in central New York. And that's fine for me, but it's still been frigid cold and rainy almost every day. So much like the last video, there's not a lot going on outside in the winter, but I do want to catch you up on some of the stuff that happened during the summer and fall of 2023. So before we go further into the new year, let's take a moment and rewind and go back and look at some of the things that have been missed. And starting out on a high note, we'll go back to mid-August of this past summer, and I got my tractor back. Finally, the input shaft was replaced, everything was working fine, and then I realized that I had a leak. Specifically, I was leaking coolant. So I had the tractor running for about 10 minutes, and it overheated to the point where it nearly shut off. So, as you would expect, back to the shop it went for another three weeks. However, when I did get it back, everything worked fine. The input shaft was fixed, the coolant was fixed, everything was good to go. So the first thing I wanted to do was try and plow the planting field, or basically any area on the farm, because as you can see this grass and weeds, this has overtaken my entire property. So I bought this one bottom plow attachment for compact and subcompact tractors from Tractor Supply. And while it's shiny and new, the advertised feature was that this thing would plunge down into the ground about 14 inches and it would till whatever you need tilled. All you have to do is hook up the top link, adjust the top link so that the plow is essentially horizontal to the ground so that it doesn't dive down into the ground and everything was supposed to work. But that wasn't exactly the case. You see, the problem with this tractor is that there's not a lot of vertical travel in the three-point hitch system. So when you have something like a tiller that rides along the ground, everything works good. But when you have something that you have to lift pretty high or plunge down, there's really not a lot of travel. So I had some issues with this plow. It did go down about three inches, but that was about the only depth that I got. And as you can see, a three or four inch plowing depth is okay for clearing off the top living layer of the soil, but it's not good at all for deep penetration into the soil to help till things up and to loosen that compacted soil. I did try adjusting the top link of the three point system so that the plow had a more aggressive angle, but as soon as I did that, as I expected, the plow dove straight down into the soil and after about six feet, it completely stopped the tractor. So I got out and I readjusted the top link to a more shallow angle like it was before. And then I was right back to the original problem that I was only getting top layer clearing with this plow. So the problem is the tractor is not powerful enough and I can't pull any ground penetrating implements with this tractor. So I needed a solution. And that solution came about six weeks later. Here's that solution. A gigantic late 1980s International Harvester 2400 Series B industrial tractor. So this thing is a massive tractor. This is a 50 horsepower diesel tractor weighing in at about 19,000 pounds. This is not the type of tractor you would normally see in a farm field. This is a commercial tractor, so this is something that you would see working on the side of the road with a road crew or in some big industrial or commercial setting. I looked on Facebook Marketplace for months for a tractor that was both big enough and had enough horsepower and yet was close by enough where either somebody could deliver it or I could have it delivered to my farm. And this came up for sale. I immediately contacted the seller, got a bunch of videos, went to see it, and purchased it on the spot. Now this tractor has three small deficiencies. First of all, the front bucket is rather rough. It's been welded and re-welded and rusted 
but I don't really need this particular tractor for the bucket, rather I need it for the three-point hitch system and for the overall horsepower and weight. Secondly, there's a pinhole leak in the top radiator hose, which sprays radiator fluid uh, onto the belt, and that sprays it everywhere else, so that has to be fixed. And there's also a pinhole size leak in the hydraulic system. But this is a very nice tractor. So the next thing is to find a plow. And by some stroke of luck, the very next day, I found one listed on Facebook Marketplace five miles away. It was a two bottom plow, and I went to the guy's house, and of course he had no way to get this up on a trailer. So we spent three hours manually loading this two bottom plow, weighing hundreds and hundreds of pounds onto my little utility trailer. In hindsight, I probably should have brought the bigger trailer, but I got it to the farm and the next order of business was to hook it up and try to plow the field. But getting that accomplished was easier said than done. Not a problem getting the tractor started and moved into position, but the problem is, which I've experienced on the smaller tractor, dealing with these implements, the implements are very heavy and getting the top link lined up and the two side arms for the three-point hitch, it's a juggling act and it's very tricky, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with it, like I don't. So needless to say, this two-bottom plow was a struggle for me. And I'll do this in very fast motion to save you a lot of the pain, but if anybody has any tips or tricks for how to get something like this hooked up, could you please let me know because this was about 40 minutes to try and get this thing aligned one arm in then the other arm in getting the arms lifted and put into position then getting the top link in place and getting everything adjusted it, it was just a massive pain in the butt and it's so heavy but eventually i got it on and it's level and even and everything looks good and I gotta tell you what an amazing thing it is for me to see a three-point hitch system that could actually lift something this big and this heavy. This was so exciting for me. So I took it for its maiden voyage. I took it out for the first time to see if it would dig. And this thing digs. I buried this two-bottom plow all the way to that top blue frame. So that's about 16 inches or 20 inches of ground penetrating depth and the tractor was still pulling it. Uh, it just, that wasn't an ideal depth to plow with this implement though. So I lifted it up and I took the first few passes and it was amazing to see not only the top vegetative layer being cleared off, but all of that soil bubbling up to the top from 20 inches down just using this two bottom plow. It was fantastic. So after my first full spiral around the field, I stopped to assess what I had just completed, which was amazing. This plow setup works phenomenally well. And I also took my camera and I placed it down into one of these valleys. And these valleys are a good 12 inches or more deep. So to say that this thing is legitimately plowing up the field is an accurate statement. But I realized that I'm going to have to do this six or seven times, at least initially, just to get the field worked. I was so excited, I sent some photos and a video to my buddy Steve, and he pointed out the fact that I made a rookie mistake, as I had never plowed a field before. I went in a big concentric spiral and apparently this is an incorrect way to plow a field. I thought it made perfect sense, but in hindsight, I realize what Steve had said. Essentially, you're supposed to go up one side, lift the plow, turn around, put your tire into the furrow that was created, the valley that was created, and then go the opposite direction. And then when you hit the end, you lift the plow, you turn around, you put your tire in that valley, and you go the other way. You just go back and forth instead of around in a spiral. 
So I did end up redoing the field, going back and forth. I did plow it about six times, and it does look a whole lot better. But I'll tell you something, I now have a new appreciation for how time-consuming farming can actually be, especially this particular step where you have to plow the fields. Now, I know that farmers who have gigantic acreage that they have to plow they use five or six or ten bottom plows on much larger tractors than what this is. But this took hours and hours and hours to do. So it took about an hour to do each individual circular pass. And as you can see in this video, there's no top cover and everything is very well plowed up. So I did that spiral probably about three times so that was a little over three hours then when Steve told me the proper way to do this plowing which is what you see in the video in front of you this took even longer this took about two hours to do one entire pass across the field just going in directional lines and then finishing it off with a spiral on the outside to really get this field ready for planting in the spring, I'm going to have to do this exact same process maybe two more times early in the spring, around April or early May. And then when I'm done with that, I have to figure out how to actually prep the surface for planting and or transplanting. And as I said, that's either a York rake or a finished tilling using my smaller tractor or something. We'll figure it out, I guess. But overall, I really like the way this comes out. When you make lots of individual passes going the same direction and then finish the field off with a couple spirals at the very perimeter, the field looks like any other farm field that you would see uh, as you're driving around your area. So I was very happy that I had created something that looked proper and I was also very happy that I plowed the field multiple times and everything seems like it'll be good for the coming year. So now that I have this big appropriately sized tractor you may be asking yourself what's next? Well clearly the next thing I need to do is get a brush hog situated so that I could tend some of these paths. This is that side road. You can't even see it. It's all overgrown. I need to come through and I need to mow this uh, entire field, essentially, all areas of the field and property. So that's going to be the next topic that we're going to discuss in a coming video. But it looks like, for now at least, I have a reasonable and manageable way to deal with this field. Come spring, I could plow the field again and once plowed, tilling it, even with my smaller tractor, will be very doable. Or I could York rake it and I could just plant in there. As long as it's plowed a few times, everything seems like it's going to be good. Now as we make our way back across the property here with the wetland on the left and the field on the right, you may notice that all of that brush has been cut down in this back field. And you may also notice that it looks like there may be grass planted and indeed that's going to be another topic of a coming video. Things are happening. I told you in previous videos all summer nothing happened and then suddenly fall came and everything seemed to have been falling into place. All that was left for the day is a little bit of TLC to the tractor. As I mentioned there's a bit of a hydraulic oil leak so I figured after putting it through its paces with the two bottom plow, why not top it up so that it's ready for the next time. So I ran to Walmart and I grabbed some hydraulic oil and tossed in the funnel and I just filled it up until it was overflowing. It's an easy location, pretty simple process and it's just one example of how good maintenance will keep equipment like this running. 
September proved to be a whirlwind of a month. So many things happening. First of all, I got this awesome International Harvester 2400 Series B tractor. It runs great, it was delivered for me, and then I was able to find in just one single evening a two-bottom plow in my own hometown, which was picked up, installed on the tractor, and I got the entire field plowed. And now, what we have to look forward to is brush hogging. I can't wait to manicure the rest of this property. So stay tuned as we continue to take a look back to the summer and fall projects that we missed. And then we'll start looking forward to the winter projects. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.